and Zorn a world apart. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words the words of the developer. And Zorn is a post-apocalyptic survival city builder where you start a new civilization with a group of people after a global nuclear disaster. Build them a new home and ensure their survival in a sheltered world threatened by constant radiation, toxic rain, sandstorms and droughts. Yes guys, we have a post-apocalyptic city builder where your enemy is not rabid mutants but it is in fact acid rain, sandstorms, and all of that good stuff. Like it's bad stuff. You start off guys hitting random seeds for your map generation. Yes, it's one of them uh, where you'll spend about 16 years clicking till you get no fucking mountains, plenty of water and loads of scrap. Once you actually find a decent map, you then get to go about populating it with your stupid fucking settlers. And they are stupid. More of that later. You'll put your basic buildings down. You know the dance in these games. You know, you put a house down and then they'll live there. They'll shag and have little babies. And then the babies grow up into adults and all that kind of stuff. You also have fields and you put farmers to them. You assign farmers to your fields. You select the crops that you're going to have. Different crops take different times to grow. But the ones that take the longest give the biggest yield. You make hunting cabins who go around allegedly hunting animals that they find. You make scrappers because there's scrap everywhere plastic everywhere scrap metal everywhere and you make scrappers and they go out and they bring that back it's one of the many valuable resources that you have uh, in this game uh, water absolutely essential you make um, water carriers who carry water from jetties to a big cistern you can have water collection towers you can have wells and all kinds of stuff to collect your water in there's medicinal herbs there's berries all over the place you need forested to plant trees and chop trees down to give you wood wood to build and all of that stuff I think you get the idea yeah, that's the way all city builders go. Now, I'm a huge city builder fan. I love these games. Brought up on the settlers, which is still the best. Still the best, guys. Do you know how you can tell a really good city builder from a shite one? There's a simple way, guys. There's a simple way. Whether or not you need a cookie cutter build in order to beat the game, this game requires it. You can't make what would be in the real world a logical settlement in this game because if you do, you f Unless it's just RNG that's screwing me, which it, which it could be, because there is real problems with that, which I'll come to shortly. See, what I've got is I've got a marketplace in the centre of my, my town. There's plenty of houses near that. Then I've got warehouses near that as well. I have the fields on the outside uh, next to the water where I have cisterns, rain collectors and things like that. To the north where the industrial stuff is, because you don't want to live next to that. So up in the north you've got all that. You've got herb gatherers who are just anywhere where there's herbs, to be honest with you. And then you've got my uh, hunter gatherers who are after deer and all that. Uh, they're looking where you would expect deer. And as the hours go by in this game, you will start getting all these resources in. You'll build tailor huts to make protective clothing against this. You'll make tool huts where they make tools that you... Uh, settlers can use to build you have builders and things like that and you have like a little weather forecast in the bottom center of your screen which tells you what's coming in the in the form of weather um, rain or no rain or drought now the difference is rain when that comes obviously your ground gets wet and so it's easy to grow stuff do water collectors fill up when there's no rain your crops will still grow because there's water around but when there's a drought that's it your lakes dry up, so there's no water coming. The only way you can get water really in a drought is from a well, which doesn't give you much anyway. Your crops will not grow in a drought whatsoever, so they're all screwed. You can pick the ones that was ready for harvest in a drought, but no further crops will come till that drought ends. And this is where RNG absolutely wrecked my game. Because the way it works is, um, it's totally random as to whether you get rain or dryness. And we proved this because I went offline with mine so that my girlfriend could play on her PC at the other side of the room. And we were both in the, in the same seasons and I was getting no rain when she was getting rain. And I got absolutely screwed because I got no rain after a drought. So I had a drought where all my crops were f***ed, all my lakes dried up. And what that means is your um, supplies of food, because it's early on in the game, and water go to zero pretty much or very, very close to zero, but because no rain came after the drought for another entire season, I couldn't grow any crops. I could get water because the lakes filled up because reasons. But I didn't get rain after that. Now, she got rain on her game. 
and so her crops were grown again mine weren't and i was f***ed. it took me about a year of end game seasons to actually recover from that but i never fully recovered and then another drought came and hit us then i got two seasons of no rain whatsoever leading up to a drought so i got no rain no rain drought f me again but i started again and uh, the next time i had a bit better luck with the rng uh, but i didn't have much luck with ralph the f***ing potato farmer because guys the ai is totally broken in this game now i know it's early access and I'm pleased it's only early access because there's a lot of stuff needs fixing in this game. For example, I had plenty of farmers. I only had four fields and I had two farmers assigned to each field, which is enough early game. It really is. But I'd been screwed by the drought and the lack of rain. And so my food supplies were very low. We just survived the drought and it was time to rebuild. Um, I had a line of potatoes ready to be harvested and then the rest of the field was empty nothing in the field so the two farmers what they should have done was go to the field pick the potatoes and sow the seed for the next crop before the next drought season after season went by they never planted so much as a fucking seed in that field do you know why guys because ralph the fucking potato farmer decided to i don't know what he was doing pissing in the cistern or something you can if you click on the field it shows you a dotted line as to where your workers are where your farmers are he was he went off into the middle of the woods, miles away, to pick some berries. <laughs> to pick some berries. I guess he was hungry. The sad thing was, guys, if he'd just gone to his own field, he could have picked potatoes like what he should be doing and just taken them to the marketplace. Or gone to one of my many warehouses and had some food from there. Or gone to the marketplace and had some food. But no, no, he decided to walk a whole day's journey. In fact, I think it took two days, a day to get there and a day to get back, just to pick some bloody berries. But guess what, guys? I had two farmers to that field. So all is not lost. Until I saw the other farmer doing exactly the same f***ing thing. And it was at that point I quit the game. I just thought, what's the point of playing this game? The way to mitigate this, make four farmers to the field. So, so you can kind of get away with two farmers being f***ed up. And just walking around the area. Just build, build more. They were miserable as well. Do you know why they were miserable? Because they were 90 years old and they were infertile. Can you imagine that? A post-apocalyptic game. I mean, people are depressed because they can't have children at 90 years old. Who even? <laughs> and you know what, right? I was forever, from the entire game, unable to make enough tools for people. Even though constantly it said that I was making two tools and it only took 1 minute 40 seconds to make two tools. And you know what? The biggest tools are my fucking people. They really are. Because they should have had a fucking tool in each hand and in each fucking foot by the time I got to the end of it. But no, no, no tools. So. And you know what? The game's like saying to me all the time, people are dying, people are dying. And you know what I thought? Let them die. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I did. I hated them. I wanted them dead. It's bugged. It's broken. And it is pretty much the only way you can win. And I've watched YouTube videos of people who have very successful towns and cities and it's you know what it's the same old cookie cutter every one of them looks the same a line of buildings there lines of houses there like your four fields there in the middle all warehouses there warehouses there warehouses there it's just in other words an unrealistic build it unrealistically to the cookie cutter build then you'll be all right no i don't do that i mean the, the good news is it can only get better. I mean, the way the AI is, it just screws you. The way the RNG is, it just kind of screws you. Um, all the droughts happen at the same time for every player, but what happens in between the droughts can totally screw your game up, as I mentioned earlier on. So it does need a lot of work in the balancing department and in the AI department. Now, it isn't all bad. It is fun to play, and you do have a lot of fun placing your buildings and trying to map out where you're going to be. I mean, it is kind of fun picking a map as well. So if you get a really good one, um, you can save it and have a, a few different goes on it. Uh, so th th there are a, a few pluses in this, and I just like city builders anyway. Uh, I've been playing it all day to day, but that's not long enough really to, to give it a full-on review. And one of the reasons I've had to stop really is because of how broken it is. But there are a lot of patches coming for this. There's a lot of new content coming this month, in fact. So I think the best thing to do is to leave it there as a first impressions and then come back in maybe six months' time or closer to it when it actually fully releases out of early access, do a full-on review then and see how much the game's improved. But I've got a good idea of what it's like now. And I can't possibly recommend that people part with £20 uh, with a game that is kind of broken like this one is unless you do the cookie cutter build which 
you shouldn't have to do in a city builder it's uh, so many city builders end up like this and it is a shame um you should be able to free build in something that looks nice the way you design it and it should work providing you have enough of everything in there but with this it's about you've got to make the paths as short as possible because your ai is so stupid and that's not good so there you go guys i'll be back in a few months to have another look at this Thank you.